Hey, Anchor Women, this is Janie Bell, and this is the first of our weekly check-in videos that we've decided to do. Anchor ended last week, and now we thought this would be a good way in this time of pandemic and us being isolated and quarantined in our homes that we could check in weekly and um, go over our, what we've been reading in our Bible and just to kind of keep us accountable and a time just to check in again with each other. And um, first thing I wanted to say, I hope you are still reading through the Bible in one year that our whole church is doing, and that's what we've been doing in Anchor. Um, in the email that I've put this video in, I'm gonna, I've listed the verses that I shared in my talk that are just the importance of God's Word and why we read it, and many of you asked for those references. And just to remind you that His Word is has a purpose in our life, and it's there to do, to accomplish in our hearts what the Lord wants. And also, it's a light and a lamp unto our feet. Um, the Lord said, is it used to encourage us, to guide us, to lead us, to show us what is in our hearts? Um, God just, His Word is so valuable to us, and I wanted to remind us of that, and that's why we're spending time reading, especially during this time of isolation, and that we would just spend time reading His Word, and every time we read it, Scripture said it's God breathed. It's God breathing His life into us, each one of us. So I hope you continue to read those. And along those lines, then I'm going to review, like we've been doing in Anchor each week, what we read this week in the Bible in one year. If you read, and if you didn't, you can go back and read it, or this will catch you up and you can continue on from here. But we uh, left off in Judges 19 last week, um, that terrible chapter of the sin at Gibeah. But we pick up in cha uh, chapter 20 of Judges, and we see the restitution for that sin in and, and Gibeah. And the guilty are punished. We see civil war among the tribes of Israel, but then there's peace. And so th that is settled. And then we go to chapter 21, and we see them providing for the tribe of Benjamin, um, which we see God's provision. He did not one of his, want one of his tribes to go um, without a legacy and to die out. And so they provided for the tribe of Benjamin. And we end Judges there, and the last verse in Judges is very sad, like many. Uh, it, we read so far, and it says that the people did what was right in their eyes. And so again, they've wandered off from the Lord and gone their own way. And then in the period of the Judges, we're picking up the story of Ruth, a sweet story, four just short chapters. And we see R Ruth with her mother-in-law, Naomi. Naomi is widowed. We see Ruth's loyalty with Naomi to go back to her home. We see Ruth meeting Boaz. We see Boaz being the kinsman redeemer and redeeming Ruth and Naomi and Boaz and Ruth marrying at the end. And besides a great story of loyalty and love for a daughter-in-law, for a mother-in-law, it's also a great story of Boaz as the kinsman redeemer, which is who Jesus is to us. It's a picture of Jesus. And then we pick up in 1 Samuel. In the first chapter, we see Elkanah and his two wives. Hannah is one of them. And she's barren, and we see her praying in the temple, and the high priest Eli blessing her. She was, and it says she pours out her soul before the Lord. We're going to come back to that. Um, and so then Eli blesses her prayers, and she is given a son. She, Samuel is born. She dedicates him to God to serve God the rest of his life. And so in Samuel 2, we see Hannah's prayer that just declares who God is and what he's done for her. We see Eli, the high priest, and his worthless sons. And he tries to rebuke him, but he has very little effect on them. Chapter 3, we see Samuel is now called by the Lord. That's that famous, I am, I here I am, Lord, passage. And then in chapter 4, we see the Philistines defeat the Israelites, and they take the Ark of the Covenant. And then, and we see Eli's sons and Eli die in the battle. In chapter 5, the Philistines are cursed because they have the Ark of the Covenant. And this is so important because that is the sign of God being with his people, so he would not have anyone else have it. So in chapter 6, the ark is returned to the Israelites. In chapter 7, the people turn from their idols, and God delivers them from the Philistines. And then we see in chapter 8, Israel demands a king. They want a king, and, and Samuel gives them a warning. God has said he is their king. They do not need another king. And Samuel gives them the warning of what will happen if they raise up a king. But in chapter 9, we see Saul is chosen to be their king. God gives in to them and lets them have a king. So Saul is chosen. And then we read in the New Testament in John, chapter we start at the end of 8, and we hear where God, Jesus says the truth. He is the truth, and the truth will set us free. In chapter 9, we see that Jesus heals the man who is born blind. We see um, Jesus calling himself, I am the light of the world. In chapter 10, we see the parable of the good shepherd. 
and we see that the sheep know the shepherd's voice. And here Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, and we know his voice. Uh, he, and then we see Jesus testifying that he is one with God, that he is God. In chapter 11, we see the death and the resurrection of Lazarus, the famous raising Lazarus from the dead. And we hear Jesus saying, I am the resurrection and the life. And then in chapter 12, we see Mary anointing Jesus' feet and Jesus enters Jerusalem, the triumphal entry before, uh, that's Palm Sunday. And then we read Psalm 61 through 65. And in Psalm 62, there is a verse that says, trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. And so if you read that, we see that um, Hannah poured her heart out before the Lord. And he heard and he came and he answered her prayer. The Psalms tells us to pour our heart out before the Lord. And we saw that earlier in Genesis when Hagar was so mistreated. And she poured her heart out before the Lord. And he came to her. And he um, blessed her and the son, Ishmael, that she was going to have. And there she called the Lord at that point. Elroy, a name she gave God that said he sees. And God is a God who sees. And so for all of us, whatever we're going through in this time, be it um, infertility like um, Hannah did or struggles, mistreatment like Hagar, be it financial struggles, be it hardships with your family, whatever you might be going through in this time of isolation, God is a God who sees. He sees where you are. And he wants us to pour our heart out to him to give him all that's on our heart and let him minister to us. And through his word, he will minister to you. So continue to read his word. And um, also, just lastly, a few of you have mentioned, well, several of you, as we are studying in our worship on Sunday, Revelations and heaven and the end times and what it will be like. Um, many of you have asked for, and so I've also put that link in the email, Anne Graham Lotz, when she came and spoke to us, the women, and she's the best talk I've ever heard on heaven. So I put the link in that email too that you, if you want to take some time and listen to that, it will be so encouraging. So I love you women. I'm praying for you and continue to read through his word and I'll see you next week.